If you're a machine learning researcher or if you're developing an important machine learning application, how can you make either yourself or your team more productive? One of the trends I've been seeing is that investments in computer systems broadly um, and sometimes HPC, high performance computing in particular, is becoming increasingly important for machine learning. And there are two reasons for this. First, in machine learning, as we move to working with larger and larger data sets, we just need big computers to train on these large data sets. But there's a second reason, which is that fast computers are actually increasingly helping machine learning researchers and machine learning developers become more productive. Let me tell you why. I want to start with an example to illustrate the concept of iterating quickly in machine learning. Several years ago, when some collaborators and I started to work on speech recognition, uh, we started off by saying, you know, let's, let's, let's try an end-to-end -end, um, deep learning approach. So we would start off with taking an audio clip like that shown at the bottom. So this is an audio clip of someone saying, maybe, you know, the quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog or some phrase. And then we would uh, take this audio clip right, and cut into little snippets. And then we'd take each little snippet and feed it through you know, a neural network like that one to try to output the transcript and try to output the alphabets of what was said. Um, I'm simplifying the, the, the actual neural network architecture and the cost function and so on a little bit here um, in order to, to present the illustration more simply. But we thought we could input an audio clip and um, have it output, you know, a transcript of what was said, like the quick brown files and so on. And you know what? It turns out this didn't work. Um, after running a few experiments with this type of architecture, we then realized that we had to switch to a somewhat different neural network architecture in which we took something similar, but then added um, additional forward and backward recurrence arrows. Again, I've simplified the network architecture a little bit, but to put in a um, RNN, a recurrent neural network here, to change the neural network so it gets more information forward and backward in time. And then we experimented around this architecture, and this worked really well, and this ultimately wound up being uh, our deep speech, speech recognition system. So even for those of us that have worked in machine learning for a long time, you know, I think I called up my first neural network when I was 16 years old, uh, but even for those of us that's done this for a long time, often we just don't know in advance what's going to work. And, and you know, my collaborators and I, we tried this first, and, and we got it wrong. And it was only by running experiments that we could figure out a new and different architecture that worked much better. One pattern I see a lot in machine learning is that we might start off, you know, you or someone else might start off with an idea like, um, let's try this type of neural network for speech recognition. When you start off, you just don't know if it's going to work. So you have to run, you know, implement something, run an experiment. Um, that then gives you an experimental result, and that often helps you improve your ideas. So you can come up with better and better ideas, better and better algorithms, better and better architectures, until hopefully you find something that works really well. Because in machine learning, we often work with such large data sets, it's not uncommon for some of the experiments we run to take maybe as long as a week or maybe even longer, like maybe a month or even several weeks. And what that means is that your ability to quickly go around this circle um, could be limited or bottlenecked by how quickly you're able to run these experiments. And so um, investments in computer systems, and I think the bleeding edge of um, AI, of deep learning specifically, is shifting to HPC, high performance computing. But those investments can cut down the time to run an experiment and therefore to go around the circle from a week to a day, you know, or sometimes even faster. So today, there are definitely experiments that using the infrastructure I had a year or two ago would have taken a month to run, that today we can just run in maybe a day or two. And this is really the difference between um, being able to try maybe a dozen ideas a year versus being able to go around that circle, you know, tens of times or maybe in, in, in a year. And this really lets you make trial ideas faster and make research progress much faster. There is one exception to this, which is that if you're working on a relatively modest, relatively small data sets, and if you can train a model and get a result back, you know, ideally in a few minutes, uh, but maybe in, in a very small number of hours, then you might not need to invest as much in computer systems or, or you know, GPUs or HPC. Today, I find that a lot of progress in AI is driven by empirical work. In other words, by running experiments in which we just don't know what's going to work. We just have to run the experiment, get a result, learn from that, and then move on. And your ability to iterate quickly um, is a common concept in Silicon Valley, but this is maybe that concept applied to machine learning. But the ability to iterate quickly really makes you much more productive as a researcher or as a research team. 
I do see some organizations that seem to me to be maybe under investing a little bit in computer systems for machine learning. And I think there are two reasons for that. One is that this is a um, relatively long term investment in which you know you have to do a bunch of work to build up faster and faster computer systems um, and then that makes the machine learning work more productive and maybe a lot of our organizations uh, are still learning to get better at uh, figuring out how to make long-term rather than just short-term investments um, and I think the second reason is you know skill sets right those of us that grew up doing machine learning often didn't grow up with an HPC or a computer systems background and I think um, really, maybe the two solutions to that are one, to spend some time learning this yourself, which is worth doing, uh, although it's hard. And the second thing I've often done is to partner with amazing computer systems researchers or you know, HPC teams, um, and, and often that partnership between machine learning researchers and uh, computer systems researchers can help both teams you know, drive a lot of machine learning progress. In deep learning, I've seen the bleeding edge of the field shift from CPU to GPU to cloud to most recently HPC computing. In the various teams I've worked with or led on deep learning, um, I think that our investments in computer systems has really dramatically helped the rate at which we're able to make progress on machine learning. I hope that these ideas help you too to make the right investments in computer systems and that these ideas help you or your teams accelerate your rate of progress on machine learning innovation and machine learning research.